Hey there guys, Dylan Hennessy here from Music Mentor Productions and I'm here today to give you five tips on how to survive a platinum record free music industry. So for those of you who might not have caught it, The Guardian released an article last week basically stating that the platinum record is dead. It's gone. There's not going to be any more platinum records. This is the first year since the platinum record has come into existence in the 70s that there's not going to be one. Now the one exception to this case might be Disney's Frozen soundtrack, but that is not from an artist. The closest that an artist has come so far would either be from Beyonce or Lord, who were able to score 750,000 copies of their album, which would give it enough for a gold certification, but not for platinum. Canada Post reports that the average indie musician is pulling in somewhere around $7,228 a year, with less than 50% of music companies pulling in less than $30,000 a year. Now this might sound a little bit staggering at first and like there's not a lot of room for growth, but I promise you there is. See, the music market in North America alone is a multi-billion dollar industry with plenty of room for potential and opportunity. The platinum record is gone! Oh my god, what are we gonna do? Don't worry, there's plenty of other ways that we can survive this. So without further ado, in no particular order, we're going to get to five tips that will help you succeed in the music industry. Number one, creative music videos and creative internet content. Now one of the great things about the music industry as time has gone on is that technology has evolved as well, and now it doesn't really cost that much in order to produce a very high quality video. Take what's going on right now, we have light bulbs set up over there and there's random guitars around and filming on some shitty camera. You hear outside, there's construction going on. They don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. Now back in the day you would have had to go out and hire a whole crew and put in all this money and investment into a music video, however nowadays if you have access to a decent camera that costs a few hundred dollars and some creative ideas and concepts, you can do it for extremely cheap. I know plenty of bands that have gone on to do this for under $2,000, under $1,000 and even just taking videos of things they find on the streets, editing it together and calling it a music video. And some of those have turned out to be fantastic. Another thing that's worth mentioning underneath that category is that if you're able to create something that gets fans engaged and is interactive, you're going to have better odds of it catching on and becoming viral. Things like, for example, the Chainsmokers hashtag selfie video. Oh god, don't get me started. But they did have the very good idea of getting people to send in their hashtag selfies and put them in the video. That way, when it came out, everyone would want to go and share it with their friends. Getting fans involved in your videos is a very great idea in order to get the video shared around. Another example of this would be OK Go's video for Here We Go Again. Now, I might be dating myself here a bit for viral videos, but that was not a hard video to film. They needed one camera angle and eight treadmills, and that couldn't have cost them very much money. It did, however, require a lot of creativity, a lot of brainstorming, a lot of time, and a lot of choreography. But those are things that if you put in the effort and are willing to do it yourself, you can pull off and achieve great results with. Walk Off The Earth are another great band that decided to put the musicality to the test by expanding themselves and doing some cool shit. Another great example of this would be Walk Off The Earth. Getting five people to play one guitar is not something that the internet had really been exposed to yet, and they were some of the first to have this idea, and to really do it in a well done way, and bring it to a big audience, and I'm just counting on my fingers to make myself look smart. The point is, they had a great idea, they knew how to pull it off without having to use a lot of money and bring it to a wide audience. Here's tip number two. Make your live show amazing. Now there's no doubt CD sales have definitely dropped off over the last 15 years, which has hurt the music industry. But in the light of that, one place that downloading music has definitely helped is live shows. Live show revenue from 1999 to 2009 went from $1.5 billion to $4.6 billion. That is a huge increase. Make your live show incredible and something that your friends are going to want to go talk about, tell their friends about, and bring them to come see your live show. See, indie artists that are able to book mid-sized venues generally don't have to pay very much, if anything at all, in order to book the venue, which means that if they're able to sell merchandise and show tickets, they can pull in a lot of serious money. If you're a rock band, don't just stand on stage and play our instruments, that's what every other band is doing. Try and do something that's different and unique that's going to make you stand apart, like having some type of backdrop or visual representation behind you, maybe having skits in the middle of your show, or dancers, or jugglers, or circus freaks, or your mom on stage dance. No, that's a bad idea. Don't get your mom on stage to dance. The same thing goes for hip-hop acts and DJs. Don't just do stuff over your backing track. Try getting a live band to be in your set as well. That way you can create a giant sound live on stage that people are going to go crazy over. Now, this is only the tip of the iceberg, obviously. I mean, there's plenty of things that you could do in a show that just haven't been thought of yet, and those would be great. But for now, let's get to point number three, which is to make a website. Now, there's a ton of reasons why someone might go ahead and make a website. One of the ones that would come to mind for me first is in order to come off as more professional. 
I mean, if you're willing to spend the time and money in order to create a website, you must obviously be serious about what you're doing. Also, when people are going to go search for your social media platforms, just direct them to your website and they'll be able to find everything they need from there. And probably better than they would have been able to through your Facebook page or anything like that. I mean, there you can list out your tour dates, you can list out your uh, previous shows and stuff. This thing, that one. Your tour dates, your videos, your photos, your blogs, and everything else that you can possibly do in one place. Having a website is also a great way to get great analytics. And if you're not tracking analytics, you need to be because this is telling you where all your fans are coming from and what they want. Analytics are going to tell you things such as gender, age, location, and these are critical pieces of information in order to create an action plan. Say you have 10% of your fan base located in one city. It's pretty obvious that you need to go play a show in that city now. And don't freak out if you're not a techie. I know I'm certainly not, and that's something that most musicians are quite honestly very guilty of. But there are a bunch of resources out there for people that aren't tech savvy in order to make websites in very simple ways. Sites like Banzoogle and Weebly, which we'll put links to below in the description. Now I know that you might be a little bit overwhelmed trying to create a whole website, but it's still best that you go and get a URL right now, and in the meantime, direct it to one of your social media pages. Here at Music Mentor Productions, we've actually done that with one of our artists, Kate Todd. And if you go to katetodd.com, you'll be brought to her Reverb Nation page. This has been part of the strategy in order to help her gain a successful Reverb Nation following, which is going great. Speaking of Reverb Nation, point number four. Stay on top of your social media and your electronic press kit. Now, this one should go without saying. I mean, it's pretty obvious that one of the biggest shifts that we've had as a society over the last 10 years has been social media. We're still trying to navigate our way through that and what exactly that means for the music industry. But in the meantime, the best thing that you can do is promote yourself like hell. Stay on top of as many of these as you can. Facebook, Twitter, Bandcamp, MySpace. Yes, MySpace is still a thing. Last.fm, Reverb Nation, Sonic Bid, SoundCloud, you name it, get on it. Now, the more that you do this, the better the odds are that people are going to take notice. I mean, one of the most powerful things about social media is it allows for a bridge between fan and artist, letting them into the personal lives of the artist, and in exchange, the artist can create content on a more regular basis in smaller amounts for the fans to consume. Things like going ahead and creating a blog or a video. You see what I'm doing here, yeah? Now, it falls on the artist to not only speak about their music, that's a big part of it, obviously, but if you are only ever speaking about the music, odds are you're actually probably going to alienate the fans. They want to see a little bit more of your personal life and what you're all about. So make sure you're not only uh, talking about your own music, but as well the trends that are happening around your neighborhood and your community and on a global scale. And for our last point, we're going to kind of bridge off an extension of the second point about the live music and talk about our fifth and final point. Support your local scene for God's sake! Oh my God! I can't stress this enough, it is super important to stay active within your community. Take the time a couple times a week to go out and actively seek out the artists that you want to go support within your community. And hopefully, they'll do the same for you. Odds are, if you go and meet them and really build a connection with them, they will. Just by being social and networking among musicians, you're going to be introduced to people and opportunities that you simply would not have had access to before. And social media might be able to take you so far, the internet could introduce you to certain things, but there's definitely a giant market for people that just know people. Once you've got out there and you know some of the people in your industry and you've done work together, then you can go and apply for bigger shows and festivals. And there you're gonna be faced with the same networking opportunities but on a much larger scale. And when you're going in and supporting your scene, this is just a way for you to give to others. And when they see that you're invested in what they're doing, they're going to be invested in what you're doing. And it's a win-win relationship that'll take you to the top. Well, that's it for today. This is Dylan Hennessy signing off from Music Mentor Productions. Thank you very much for watching this video, and if you like what you saw, you can go ahead and subscribe to my channel. You can also head on over to musicmentorproductions.com, which I'll leave a link to in the description, as well as a bunch of resources and articles that were mentioned in this video so that you can go ahead and check those out, and hopefully they help you. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Ow! Oh, and now the shot is ruined. There's no going back now. Oh, it is over.